All right, so today was the first day I had a chance to come and bring out the Apex Optics Rival 4 to 32 by 56. So now I just had enough time today to come and zero the rifle. Um, stay tuned, we'll get to some tracking drills and some things like that here coming up in the future. But today we'll just get a zero set on the rifle, go through some of the basic features before we start diving in to some of the other stuff. All right, now to take just a quick overlook at the scope and all the features it's got. So as I mentioned, this is the Apex Optics Rival 4 to 32 by 56. So your magnification range is all the way down from four up to 32. And that is a huge range of magnification. So now when I'm shooting PRS competitions, I usually don't ever go more than 20, but when you're shooting tight groups or some longer range type stuff, being able to go up to that 32 magnification is gonna be absolutely fantastic. So now one thing that does separate good scopes from bad scopes is how clear they are at that higher magnification range. Some of your cheaper optics are gonna end up blurring out the edges, getting a lot less clear and things like that when you run up to your higher magnifications. Um, We'll get some video through the scope here soon. I didn't have a battery on me today, but when we go out and run it again, we'll get some footage and show you guys the clarity and how nice and crisp those edges are, even all the way up to your max magnification range. Still up here, what you see is we've got our elevation turret. And now this goes all the way to 15 mils per revolution. So now that is an enormous amount. So if you're comparing that to MOA, that's over 50 MOA per revolution. My last rifle scope was only 25. So being able to go a full 50 MOA or 15 mils is absolutely insane. I mean, the only time I've ever had to go more than that with my rifle is, is when I've shot a mile. So pretty much up to a mile, I can dial without having to go a full rotation. So now this is where I was at when I bore sighted, but let's take a look. So just under 11, but now when you come up, past your one full revolution, you can see your indicator pops up up here, meaning you've gone a full turn around. So now this does have a zero stop, but if you do want just a quick check, you can come and run your finger across here, fill that nubs up and know that you've gone a full revolution over. And now you come back and it's now popped down when you're back under. So now it does come, has a nice solid zero stop about half a mil underneath your zero so you can come and under dial just a little bit come back bump it up to zero so let's go back to what i was for bore sighting now same thing over here on your windage adjustment knobs um looks like you got about five or six mils per revolution looks like five mils um each of these does have a resettable zero so you can come back and reset the zero after you're done. We'll do that once I get sighted in. Over here, you have your parallax knob. So now the numbers on here are not marked. They do have kind of a guide to tell you where the numbers or which one of these indicating lines means. Um, the numbers that they put on these scopes usually aren't precise all the time anyway. So not having the numbers on there is not a bad thing, but you will probably want to come back and mark kind of where your parallax adjustments are. And as you can see over here also, you have a illumination knob to turn on the illumination of your reticle. So now during the day in competitions, I hardly ever use an illuminated reticle, um, but it is a nice feature to have when we get to look through the scope, we can kind of see what that looks like under illumination. Okay, now that we're dialed, we'll just come and reset our zero stop. Let's make sure the turret doesn't rotate when we're undoing the screws. It's got three screws on the top, we just loosen up. So make sure it doesn't rotate while you're doing this. Come and got the three right here. And now with it's loose, you can see it can come off so it can rotate freely or you can just rotate it. But as long as you don't hear a click, that means you're not going to be changing location. So right there, get it back to zero. Just line up the arrow with the zero. Come back and tighten these screws just so they're snug. Don't need to over tighten them, they hold good. Bump on that one. And now it's reset. Now the exact same thing on the windage. It's got these three little screws. Loosen them up just enough to disengage the turret. Okay, so it free spins without clicking. Rotate it down to that arrow lines on zero. Screw it back snug. 
and our zero is now all set and ready to go. So we'll just come and see. Okay, so right there, we've still got 19 mils of elevation before I run out after zeroing. So you see we come over 15, full revolution indicator pops up. Dial back to zero, so that you can go back a little bit past zero where the stop is, so you can under dial. And now we are right back on zero. And it is now set and ready to go.